Hello, everyone. Welcome to our practice and community tonight. Um, there is a whole community here with you, uh, whether you're practicing with us on uh, Zoom or after the fact on YouTube, uh, just to know that you might just be seeing my mug on the face, on uh, the screen here, but um, there's a whole group of us here practicing with you in heart and mind. And um, tonight is a third of a little mini series we're doing here on something called the five aggregates. So down below the recording, you'll see part one and part two links will be there if you want to kind of um, follow through with those. The five aggregates is um, an insight. Uh, I, 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 it just astounds me this one how the the Buddha was uh, had cultivated such presence and practice and awareness and clarity and wisdom to be able to see this so clearly and to be able to describe it and teach it to us and it's a very liberating insight and and it's also just a concept <laughs> it's not like don't cling to it and hold on to it um because that defeats the whole purpose it's ju it's just um a model if you will but it's profound and liberating to um practice with it and look into it. And so it's a model of how we create a self, which is extraordinary to me, um, and how we create our world into a sense of solidity and permanence and, um, and then the illusion of control comes hot on the heels of that so it's a so the first uh, part one that we did what of these they're called aggregates because uh, the the poly word is khandas which means heap like a heap a pile of items so there's this these five separate these not separate but five elements that are heaped together come together to create a self and to create everything else so the first one of these is what's called form or rupa and there that was the whole part one that you could um watch again if you if you want to and form is is like this this thing with its sense doors its eyes ears nose mouth touch I missed one and and the mind and mm, not just my form but everything else all of these all this stuff the whole world around us has it has a form to it has is cr comprised of elements and has structure um so that's the first piece in this heap of of um aggregates the second insight that the buddha saw is what's called vedana and vedana we covered in part two and that is sometimes translated as feeling tone vedana is a very particular experience that every contact we have through what we call a sense door has a, an immediate experience of being pleasant unpleasant or neither pleasant nor unpleasant what we call neutral so it's kind of it's too much to go into fully again but you, you could watch part two or do other reading and uh, listen to other talks on vedana and um, to get a, a fuller sense of that <clears throat> tonight 
Tonight, we want to talk about the third element in the heap, and this is called Sanya in Pali. So that's S-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. And the two N's have a, that little wave symbol over the top of them, which makes it sound, you would say the second N like a, like a Y, Sanya is how that's pronounced. And Sanya is what is called perceptions. Uh, perception is includes um, a couple different elements. One of them is remembering memory. Another thing that happens with perceptions is naming. We have language and we name whatever we're perceiving. Also part of this is categorizing and concepts, concepts like money, like time, like space, like me, you, um, et cetera. God, we have all these concepts and views, opinions. So perceptions, is a, a place where we can really get stuck or we can become free. It's extremely important. So what happens now is between these first three aspects, a very amazing thing happens. So I'll see if I can describe it. So I'll just take one of the sense doors. Remember, we have all these sense doors. So let's just talk about the eye sense door. So this is the form. Is There's this form of this eye organ that's connected with this brain that does all this amazing receiving of signals of light and shadow and et cetera that we call seeing. And so... When the eye opens and receives other forms, so right now my eyes just open and I'm looking at, at this cup that's here in front of me. And that is also a form, right? It's an object and there's a contact here between this sense door and that object. And Immediately, Vedna happens with that. So in this case, it's a pleasant Vedna because I really like this cup. It's smooth and it's um, a nice shape, a nice weight. Um, it, it was a gift. Well, now I'm getting into perceptions, but that's, yeah. So I went too far with that. That's perceptions. But just the first contact of it is a pleasant Vedna. So immediately, like, this is what amazes me is how the Buddha could pull this apart because immediately I, naming happened, cup. Um, immediately the perception of remembering that's a cup, you know, because of all the past associations being taught, that's a cup, knowing it's a cup the naming of it, the, the uh, opinions and views around it happened immediately. And because it was pleasant Vedna, I wanted it. <laughs> My hand wants to reach for it right away. I want to keep it. And in that moment, because of not seeing clearly, I'm placing like a, there's a the illusion that that cup is there, which means I am here. Instantly, as soon as we have the perception of someone, something, some concept being there, instantly it creates me here. Does that make sense? 
<laughs> and and this happens without us being aware of it. It just happens instantly. And then depending on that Vedana, the other part of pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral, I either want it or want to get rid of it, or with neutral, I'm not really paying attention to it, not seeing it, not, not even attending to something or someone or some experience being there. Um, so there's nothing wrong with this and you can't stop it. <laughs> this is just how these fantastic systems work. This human being works this way. And it's, we needed the, all of these things to survive. We still do. We need concepts to be able to navigate our world. You know, if you've read the, the book or heard her TED Talks and such, um, My Stroke of Insight. Oh, I don't remember her name, but I have the book upstairs. Should have grabbed it. Um, I apologize for not recalling her name right now. I'll put it in the link below in the YouTube recording. But uh, she's a neuroscientist and had a stroke and could realize she was having a stroke as it was happening and managed to call. And um, by the time she was calling her friend, she couldn't speak anymore, but she did get intervention pretty quickly. But it um, completely damaged the part of her brain that did this uh, perceiving of separateness and so she in that time of uh, recovery she really lived in a place of complete unification with everything which meant no sense of self at all and um, so it's really an interesting example of of um, this function of perception and and when it gets damaged and when she was recovering she talks about how she had she consciously chose how much of her of the self she wanted to reform you know she didn't want to get totally caught again in the delusions of not seeing clearly but she also needed to be able to function in the world so uh, an interesting um yeah, it's an amazing book and wonderful teacher. So I digress there a little bit. So when when that is there, it means I am here. And so form, this, these forms creating contact with the world combined with Vedana, the experience of pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral, with delusion if it's not seen clearly it creates wanting and not wanting and it creates me over and over and over again ad infinitum all day long creates me and creates separation and creates the illusion of permanence there's that thing it, it the the delusion of think seeing that is permanent or um solid which is not accurate and uh this creates a lot of suffering joseph goldstein someone was mentioning earlier uh joseph's book on mindfulness a practical guide to awakening wonderful amazing book and uh in that he says it this way when perception that we're talking about tonight and mindfulness are balanced, they work together in the service of insight. But when they are out of balance, perception can keep us imprisoned in the world of concepts, imprisoned in the conventional idea of self. Um, so with each of these aggregates, Khandas, they have a simile that uh, the Buddha offered, a, a, a image 
that helps us to can you know resonates with some of us to be able to see clearly what this is about uh, the first one of the a form is likened to like a a, a a lump of foam floating down a river so it's just a a pile of bubbles <laughs> that any one thing that we think is this form when we look closely and we um, examine with insight when we know with insight we see it's all just bubbles constantly changing and shifting and uh, falling away and etc the second one vedna was described like um, big raindrops on a lake that that create a bubble and um how ephemeral how easily popped though those vedanas are that uh because this cup isn't always um going to be a pleasant vedana for me like uh maybe it gets stained or something or or someone else is using it <laughs> and i'd be unpleasant or something or maybe i'm not paying attention to it and it's neutral so the vedana is not a permanent solid thing it's like a bubble constantly changing the simile for tonight for perception for sanya is um a mirage because of the illusion of solidity right a mirage you can picture in a desert and um seeing that oasis that mirage in the distance and you get closer it seems it looks so solid so real that you run towards it and of course it's it's an illusion it's a mirage it evaporates it and so when we look closely and with insight at our perceptions we see that that's an illusion of solidity the illusion of myself being some solid permanent separate entity the illusion of you being that of any anything any concept any um yeah any perception uh in the simile it, it's uh, written like this now suppose that in the last month of the hot season, a mirage were shimmering and a person with good eyesight were to see it, observe it and appropriately examine it. To them, seeing it, observing it and appropriately examining it, it would appear, appear empty, void, without substance. For what substance would there be in a mirage? In the same way, a practitioner, a student, a meditator sees, observes, and appropriately examines any perception that is past, future, or present, internal or external, blatant or subtle, common or sublime, far or near. To them, seeing it, observing it, and appropriately examining it, it would appear empty, void without substance for what substance would there be in perception so the the we were talking earlier about these three ways of developing wisdom and the first is just hearing so for some of us this may be like the first time you've heard these again concepts but also insights um and it and it may be really confusing and to just know that that's totally normal and okay and it's the first part of developing the wisdom is just to hear it um and then the second aspect of developing wisdom is to reflect on it practice with it inquire do some more reading listen to other talks and and really see for yourself how perception happens it's incredible 
The third way of developing wisdom is by direct knowledge, not by anyone telling you, but by seeing for yourself. And this is why we practice. <laughs> this is why we meditate, is so we can cultivate this wisdom, stability, calm, to be able to see for ourselves. This is when we know and experience these things for ourselves, then it is liberating. Sometimes these khandas are described like streams rather than a heap or a, a, a aggregates, a heap of aggregates. Um, and I think when we see them with insight, we see there like a stream. There's all, all these things form is just coming and going, Vedna is constantly changing, perceptions are completely uh, conditioned by all of our, our experiences in our life, completely conditioned and constantly changing. And so when seen with wisdom, there these things are just like a stream when they're not seen with wisdom, they are more like the aggregates, this pile of things that creates me and creates the world, um, how, how I'm seeing the world. Yeah. Um, anything else? Yes, so much more. <laughs> Um, but let's practice with it and just check it out. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So practice. Uh, adjusting your posture, getting any other supports you need for uprightness, wakefulness, ease, steadiness. You might like to dim your lights or turn away from the computer. If you're experiencing pain, you might like to lay down. If there's sleepiness, then sitting upright might be helpful. Seeing how the temperature is for you in your space, if there's anything else you need to be comfortable so that we can invite some stillness into our experience. All right. So bringing in supports for this form. Inviting some restfulness into the eyes, whether that's with eyes closed or just resting down and slightly open. Taking a first few minutes here to really Bring some awareness to relaxing the body. Letting the shoulders feel heavy. The face peaceful. Belly soft. Hips heavy.
Relaxing and grounding. Just allowing all of yourself to gather here in the center of this moment. So we cultivate some stillness and calm in the body and the mind. By just allowing the body knows how to settle. Mind knows how to settle. We don't have to wrestle it or push it. Just meeting yourself with kindness for a few more moments here in silence. And then we'll work with um, bringing mindfulness to a couple different sense doors here. The first one could be hearing. So we have this form of this ear organ connected to all these nerves and to the brain. Amazing organ and this ear is sensitive to the vibrations that we call hearing even hearing is already a concept ear is a concept there's just this sense door that is making contact with our world around us and receiving vibration. The sound of my voice coming and going, maybe sounds of others in your home or animal companions. There may be sounds from outside or even subtler, more constant sounds like a hum or an electronic appliance. Some of these different Vibrations, contact with hearing, sense door are pleasant. And some we might notice, depending on what sounds are happening at this moment, may be experienced as unpleasant. This is before it becomes liking or disliking. It's just maybe the difference between a bird singing or a, a car horn honking or whatever it is for you.
and other hearing experiences may be neutral, something like a, a more subtle or constant hum or the sound of silence. If your environment happens to be very quiet, there might not be much to work with here, um, but just see if there is sounds happening. You might be able to notice how quickly, instantly the mind names it and places it as a concept, a memory, opinions. And when that happens, that naming and placing of a sound, like that's the fridge or that's the neighbor, it instantly creates you here and that is there. This isn't something we stop or try to control, but we just want to see it with wisdom. See it, observe it, and appropriately examine it. And then if you like, you can check out another form sense door, perhaps the experience of touch. These sensations that we're directly feeling of temperature, pressure, tingling, texture, contact. Vibrations, flow. So many sensations happening in the body right now. And particularly in stillness, discomfort might arise for some, or there may be um, pain or previous injuries in the body. And as we rest in stillness, that might come more to the forefront of awareness. So there could be sensations of pressure or sharp sensations or electrical sensations. And then we can notice the second khanda here of Vedana. Some sensations are experienced as pleasant, some as unpleasant, and some as neutral, not really noticed. Like what's the sensation of the inside of your forearm or behind your ear? Maybe it's neutral. 
not really known. So if a sensation of itch happens, which it probably will because I just said the word, see if that Vedna is perhaps pretty immediately unpleasant. And what happens with that? We want to get rid of it. But when we see it with wisdom and clarity, we see it as a mirage. It's already moved and changed. It arose, it will pass away. And there may be some sensations that are pleasant, perhaps a comfortable temperature or a nice texture or tingling. That might be something that we want to keep or we want that to spread. And even just with these bodily sensations, we can see how quickly naming and placing happens. Feeling pressure in, and immediately my mind names left foot. The Vedna of it is unpleasant and what I want to move. But I'm going to stay still and just see that it's impermanent, it's not something separate, and it doesn't create me that's wanting to get rid of anything. And then if you like, you could open to the mind sense door. At times, thoughts arise, memories, And the Vedana of them can be pleasant or unpleasant or neutral. And we might be able to get a glimpse of how each of these thoughts creates me.
always the central character in all the thoughts, me. This too can be seen with wisdom as a mirage. And then we can just let go of the reflections, these different ways of wisdom, the hearing, the reflecting. And for these last few minutes of practice, just drop all of the concepts as much as possible. It will keep happening kind of automatically, but it can just be in the background and rest into the streams. All of these experiences are just flowing through. There's nothing to get or get rid of.
In a moment when I ring the bowl three times, there's an opportunity to experience again this hearing form, sense door, making contact, and watch how the mind names the sound and places the sound, has concepts and views perceptions and also Vedana maybe it's pleasant or unpleasant or neutral and there's nothing wrong with any of it we just want to see it clearly for what it is a mirage There's another description here that, uh, again, from Joseph Goldstein's book, Mindfulness. It's a, a big book, but it's got it's all in here. Really approachable and uh, wonderful. Access, accessible, yes. Um, and he's talking about perception here, and uh, it's an, another lovely simile. Um, imagine for a moment a great summer storm. There's wind and rain, thunder, and lightning. But there is no storm apart from these elements. Storm is simply a, the concept or designation for this interrelated mix of phenomena. In the same way, when we look more closely at what we are calling self, we see a constellation of rapidly changing elements, each one which is itself momentary and insubstantial. Understanding our experience through the lens of the five aggregates helps us realize for ourselves the fundamental selfless nature of all phenomena. All right, so that's three of five. <laughs> Next week will be part four, very, um, as we continue uh, creating um, creating our sense of self and the world around us and, um, and a lot of suffering. <laughs> Okay, so thank you for joining us on the recording, and um, you can also put questions down below on the YouTube recording, and um, I can respond um, if you like. Thank you.